Many active people think that they have to eat in a very specific way to support their athletic training, and that their diets must be vastly different than someone who doesn't exercise. But the truth is that lifters and athletes need to focus on the foundations first. A firm mastery of the basics of nutrition, and even more importantly, consistent execution of those basics. What is known as sports nutrition is just fine-tuning a good thing. In this video, we'll give some easy ways to eat to optimize training and recovery. But no matter what your background or how you eat, the most important takeaways are the same. Athletes of all types are at the greatest risk of sabotaging their performance and results through two behaviors, not eating enough calories and meeting those calories through junk food. Now let's break down the hows and whys using some common sports nutrition myths as a place to start. Plenty of us have a preconceived idea of how an athlete of any type should look, and it's usually incredibly lean. When we are applying that perception to ourselves, it often guides how we train and how we eat, even more than our actual performance goals. But here's the thing. No evidence indicates that a direct relationship exists between an athlete's body fat and their performance in the gym, provided the athlete isn't obese. In addition, people who have very little body fat especially female athletes, have nothing to gain by chasing leanness and performance at the same time, and they put themselves at risk for health problems. If you're, say, training for a physique or bodybuilding show, sure, there's a time to seriously cut down, but that time should be limited to a targeted show prep. The rest of the time, eat a balanced diet that gives you adequate fuel for your training and recovery. And likewise, Treat any diet that demands you cut calories while training for performance with great skepticism. Bottom line, if you're stepping on the stage, the trail, or in the ring, don't get too lean. Many athletes have compromised their performance by trying to lower their body fat to achieve unrealistic ideals. If you're training hard in the gym or in a sport almost every day, like an hour or more, your needs are slightly different than someone who's totally inactive, or at least they're different in quantity. Basically, an athlete needs a diet just like anyone else, only more of it. You need more calories, maybe as much as double what you need if you were inactive, give or take. Purely due to your training, you probably also need more protein, more carbs, more water, and more of a wide range of micronutrients. Your fat requirements are probably about the same. What's more, people who are fit and who have lean, muscular body compositions also burn more fat than people who aren't active, even when they're not training. As you add metabolically active muscle tissue, you'll start burning even more calories every day, meaning you'll still need more calories to power you. Now, don't take any of this to mean that you need more empty calories, like sugar or junk food. You need more nutrients and more fuel. When you eat more nutrient-dense foods, guess what? You will get all those extra nutrients automatically. The idea that you'll burn more fat if you train on an empty stomach has been around for decades. And to be clear, if you're just walking a few miles, there's probably no big downside. But if you're going to be performing any intense or long duration activity, like more than an hour, no matter if it's cardio, a sport, or strength training, you have nothing to gain and everything to lose by doing it fasted. Why? Because carbohydrates are the limiting fuel for exercise, and especially high intensity or long duration exercise. When you haven't eaten for eight hours or more, your ability to train at any sort of intensity will be greatly diminished. Even if you just have one piece of fruit or a glass of milk, you'll set yourself up for a better training session. And to be clear, high quality, adequately intense training sessions in a row can definitely help you burn fat. Research has also shown that no, your body does not preferentially choose stored body fat over carbohydrates when you train fasted. On the contrary, you put yourself at risk for using muscle mass for fuel, which is exactly what you don't want no matter your goals.
Let's be clear, a well-planned vegetarian diet can supply all the necessary nutrients to power performance and produce results. It's the well-planned part that catches a lot of people. Many vegetarians tend to consume a lot of empty calories and tilt their diet towards sweet or sugary fats. And those calories come at the expense of the same things we all need, protein, veggies, and healthy fats. In the protein video, we discuss the idea of complementary proteins, or vegetable protein sources, that can be combined to create a complete protein. If you're a vegetarian athlete, you need to have that list memorized. And yes, depending on your body and circumstances, you may need to take some supplemental micronutrients, such as iron, zinc, calcium, and vitamin B12. And don't be afraid to use vegetarian protein powders either. If you're eyeing elite athletic performance and you're a vegetarian, it'll probably require an extra level of planning. But if you're up for the challenge, that just might make you a better, more conscientious athlete overall. There have been many successful vegan and vegetarian athletes. Muscle glycogen is the storage form of carbohydrates that is used most extensively during intense and prolonged exercise. The more intense the exercise, the more you'll rely on carbs when you do it. Let's give this a visual component. You can see that at 25% of VO2 max, which is a measure of cardiovascular capacity, you're overwhelmingly using fats as a fuel. At 65%, which is more like hard cardio or weight training, you use both fats and glycogen. At 85%, you're really leaning into those carb stores. Plenty of athletes look at a chart like that and think they simply must carb up before or even during routine exercise with sports drinks, candy, or carb powders. But even at pretty high intensities, you probably have adequate stored carbs to last 60 to 90 minutes, as long as you have a solid foundation in your diet. After those 60 to 90 minutes, you definitely are at risk for hitting the wall and will probably need some sort of supplemental carbohydrate. Yes, carbs are important, and the more intense or longer duration your training, the more important they are, and the more of them you should probably consume. But the best way to get them is, and always has been, eating adequate carbs in your diet, not by chasing quick refueling through sugars or sports drinks. And the best drink, it's still water. Of course, things like sports drinks have their place, and that place is in really long events. A two hour leg day or an epic run, sure. A half hour of high intensity cardio or 45 minute chest workout, save your money. Or even better, spend your money on actual food. If you participate in intense training daily, carbs should probably make up at least 60% of your diet, or eight to 10 grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight. In hands-on terms, like we discussed in the carbohydrate video, that means a couple of fist-sized portions with lunch and dinner, plus some fruit at breakfast and maybe with a snack. If you know you're in for an epic training session of 70 minutes or more, a pre-workout meal that's high in carbs with some protein and little to no fat can be a good idea. It can definitely help you to have enough energy to endure and get the full benefit of that training. Likewise, if you're doing two-a-days or other multiple training sessions, having some simple carbs between them can be a good idea. But no pre-workout meal, no matter how perfect, compensates for a poor diet at other times. Your overall training diet matters far more. Bodybuilders have been known to talk reverently about the anabolic window that exists after training, where the muscles are more receptive to protein and amino acids. This is the basis of that ultimate lifter ritual, the post-workout shake. More recent research has indicated that this so-called window is far larger than it's been thought to be, like several hours, not just 30 to 45 minutes. However, this doesn't mean that having a plan for post-training nutrition isn't worth your time. It definitely is. At the International Society of Sports Nutrition, of which we are both members, we like to think of it this way. No matter the size of the window, there's still nothing to be gained by not eating after a workout. Especially if your training is intense or lengthy, like over an hour, consuming some protein and quick digesting carbs in the first hour following training is a good idea. It's tough to beat something like a protein shake with a piece of fruit. 
As we explained in the protein video, the only real advantages of supplemental protein are their convenience and the fact that they usually don't fill you up so much that you can't eat again soon. Post-workout is when these advantages really become clear. Put another way, if following the ritual of having a shake right after training means that you can consume it and then a full meal in a period where your body will make great use of it, then what's the downside? Furthermore, if you do not eat to recover, your next workout will suffer. Of course, a protein shake is just one option. More important than the specific item you eat post-workout is the nutrients it delivers. You want a solid dose of protein at this time, like 20 to 30 grams, and depending on the intensity of your training, an equally substantial dose of carbohydrates. Get them after every training session, and it'll pay off over time in terms of better recovery, performance, and overall results. To look around online, it'd be easy to believe that there's a way that bodybuilders eat, a way that runners eat, a way fighters eat, and a way that someone just looking to lose some fat eats, and they're all dramatically different. That may be the case at the most elite levels, but the vast majority of us just need to make sure we have a solid foundation with some minor fine tuning. Prioritize protein, fill up on veggies, eat enough, and drink plenty of water. Those are the rules, no matter who you are. And if you execute them, they're almost always enough.